Hello ladies and gents, Romy Reviews here, please like, comment, subscribe, this is my review for Insecure Season 3, Episode 6, Ready Like. So the episode starts off with Issa seeing Lawrence, and so the next step is, well what have you been doing this entire time? And we see this montage of Lawrence and Chad, really, we see Lawrence... Every time he sees a girl, he sleeps with her. Every time he sees a girl, he sleeps with her. Chad was supposed to be getting married, but his fiance stood him up at the altar. And I'm like, Chad, you were messing around with big booty strippers. Well, they really weren't big booty. You're messing around with strippers on your... Come on. And it got out. <laughs> that, come on. Come on. Lawrence, again, he was sleeping around so many women that he actually contracted gonorrhea. Thankfully, that's an STI, meaning that it was an infection, meaning that it was curable. But still, it's still nasty. It's still nasty. Everything that glitters isn't gold. Everything that shines isn't gold. I respect the fact that Lawrence actually went and sold his wild oats after being out, out of a relationship. He did what he was supposed to do minus the protection part and being careful because thank god that it was just gonorrhea and i feel like the show put that in there because a lot of people were complaining last year that they weren't seeing they saw all these sex scenes it was supposed to be a realistic show but they weren't seeing any comments and protection so i'm sure anyway isa decides that she wants to throw a you know a fun block party for her community and this woman who's there at the center giving her all the paperwork in order to do so is trying to let her know that here's the reality of that you want to do something that's great but you're gonna need liquor you're gonna need all these different things Issa wanted to get it all done within a month and she said no this is easily like six months of planning and of course Issa is all about the quick scheme but at least Issa is moving forward with something. Nathan and Issa seem like a real relationship. He's supporting her. He's saying, you know what? I got your back, whatever you need. And it's cute for now. It's cute for now. <sighs> Molly is still being Molly. She's still dodging the guy who was taking care of her during the, her Coachella drug trip. <laughs> and because he has her, um, what do you call it? He has her jacket. Remember the one that she laid on the floor? Yeah, he has it. Molly's assistant has a great love life. She's talking about her man. And Molly just has this look of, ain't nobody ask you about your man. <laughs> because Molly's a little bit jealous, a little bit bitter. But we're not surprised about that. Issa, on the other hand, is... And you can tell that Nathan's catching feelings. He's looking at Issa that certain way. And... It's the moment of truth for them to define their relationship. And it looks like they're in a relationship. Now, Dirty Lawrence, that's what I'm calling him, Dirty Lawrence. And I'm glad that he's doing this part. I'm glad that he's doing this part. Um, he is to call the woman that he's came into contact with and let them know that he possibly could have infected them. They need to get tested. Maybe they had you know, the infection first and gave it to him. But he called one of the women and s who said she never slept with him. <laughs> and she said, you're so nasty and you're so dusty that you didn't even realize that we didn't sleep together. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Issa is... <sighs> Issa has to deal with a lot. Remember, she's still kind of acting as the, you know, the resident supervisor at her building, apartment building. She has to clean up the dog poop, but she's using a water hose to clean it up. The tenant is saying how he doesn't have a dog, so he doesn't need to clean up anything. And then you hear the dog bark. Lyft calls Issa and tells her that she needs to talk to them because there was a reported physical incident in her one of her car rides as we know that was because nathan was defending her honor so then she calls nathan and says i need your help lift has called me about the incident she sends him a text <sighs> molly finally gets her jacket back from the guy and the guy's interested in molly and right now molly's kind of giving him that you know that nice brush off as in 
uh, I'm kind of busy right now. You know that busy line. We all know that it doesn't matter what's going on in people's lives. If they really want you in it, they'll find a way. So that's an automatic cop-out. Automatic cop-out. Even if this is the truth. Ma Molly is talking to Issa and Kelly about why she can't date this guy. And Issa just throws it out there. Is it because that he's Asian and, you know, girl, is it because of his race? And Molly says, no, she's dated outside her race before, but she knows she wants to end up with a black man. She doesn't want to teach someone about her culture. And so then Kelly said, there's a tumbleweed rolling right out of your puss. There's no, there's, why, this is dating. We end, this is dating and like court, um, you know, courting. That's it. That's it. Why are you making this into something bigger than it actually is? Why are you making this into something bigger than it actually is? Why? Why are you doing that? That doesn't make any sense. You are doing too much. You are doing too much. While not doing enough. So that's when Issa, she takes center stage and talks about how... Because Kelly's doing her usual Kelly thing of, you know, which one's Nathan? Is Nathan the one that she's up with? No, no, no. <laughs> And that's when he says, Y'all know nothing about her man. Her man. She talks about how it's official. And it's not like a Daniel official. It's a real official. And it's great. He's super supportive of her. Perfect. Issa's going to do a business venture. She's going she's gonna to throw a block party. If you looked at Molly's face, Molly had that look of... And then the name? What was it called? Music with a Q... Musical Inc. because with a Q because we do it quick. We do music quick quickly. See how difficult that was for me to go and put. Oh Lord, please bless Isa. Please bless Isa. <laughs> and Kelly's gonna go and do the cupcakes for what? What's the child's name? Tiffany's a baby shower. Which none of them are actually throwing, mind you. Keep that in mind. Chad is talking to... Oh my gosh, in this part, just... Because this is so Chad. So Chad is talking to Lawrence. And telling Lawrence, you made the calls? You never made the calls? Really? 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 And then, I I'm thinking judgment... They can't be in judgment over here. Chad, you were going to mess with big boy stripper. I mean, with strippers the night before you're supposed to get married. Come on now. Hmm, trifling. Chad gets on my nerves. Oh, Lord. And then that singing. And then here comes Derek. Oh, uh, it's this whole thing about is Lawrence really over the whole Issa thing? And. At the moment, it seems like Lawrence is in a better place, but I don't know if they fully got the closure that is needed. Why did Lawrence say, oh Lord, he, he, he told Derek, he was like, hey daddy. I said, nope, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not finishing that. Let's stop right there with Waller Head. The look on Derek's face when he found out that Lawrence had an STI. <laughs> and Lawrence kept saying, hat. Chad saying half. Lawrence said hat. Half. It's a part of your story. It's never going away. I said, now why does Chad have the quotables? That is true. That is true. And a lot of people, because it's like, oh, well, that was then. No, it still happened, though. It still happened, though. That's the important part. It happened in the first place. Now it's the day of the baby shower, and they got Tiffany this multi-layered something, and <laughs> oh yeah, I, I love when Kelly also said, you know, I love these cupcakes because, you know, they're white all over, but at the very top, little chocolate chips, just to remind, you know, the married couple that the baby's still in the <laughs> I said, God. I love Kelly. Anyway, they're there. Uh, we see that Issa's brother is there, even though Issa's relationship with her brother is so weird. I know he's not a big part of her storyline and part of the show, but it's still so weird because he kind of pops in, pops out. And I don't know if he's just, I know he loves his sister, but 
he just kind of has an attitude of, oh, I don't have time for her mess. That's what it is. That's what it is. And it looks like we see Tiffany does have other friends. There's this one woman who comes and she's really happy and giggly and all over Tiffany. And we're all looking like, wait, so when did all of that happen? And then we see Lawrence comes, gives his present and then his second present. And he doesn't really want to commingle with all the other guys that were forced there because this is a co-ed baby shower. Not a baby shower where the men that are only there are part of the family. No, no, no. It's, okay, that's your girlfriend. Bring the boyfriend or bring the husband. I said, oh, that's a lot. But I'm going to dip left. And there we see Tiffany. As her baby, her pregnancy pictures. She dressed up as Beyonce when Beyonce, uh, you know, dressed up in the garden she dressed up as cardi b when cardi b was performing on saturday night live she serena williams when she was pregnant and then there was another one that oof, it, i don't know i think she was just kind of dressed up as a god or something dro is there so we know it's going to be messy isa is trying to figure out where are you where where's nathan because nathan's been ghosting her molly comes along and says do you want me to call him? No, you don't need to do that. It's fine. Two seconds later. Okay, call him. It goes, well, it can't go to voicemail because he, his voicemail isn't set up. I guess at least in that fashion, it's not like, okay, it's just Issa, even though he's not dumb. I mean, you're giving the, this guy not enough credit. But Issa and Lawrence finally talk. And it was so nice to see them civilized. Issa and Lawrence were just saying how, um, well, Lawrence, he's doing well with his job. He likes his apartment. You know, working out. Great. Issa, she quit her job. And Lawrence looked shocked like, oh. Yeah, and she, she doesn't have a next step yet. But she's excited. She's trying to do like some business stuff. And she even said, you know, if any of your like business oriented people could go and help me out, I would appreciate it. Again, a full 180 from the East and Lawrence that we're used to seeing. And it was nice seeing two people, a couple, a ex couple being able to cohabitate. That's it's that's very important. They were able to laugh, giggle, they were even laughing over there was a diaper. And I said, I don't care if that's chocolate cake or poop. Why are we opening up the diaper? And Y'all nasty. Y'all are nasty. And Molly was admiring that. So then she wanted some of that of her own. Just just a nice just a nice conversation with an ex. So she goes over to Dro. And Dro gives her the... Oh, I almost said something. Dro gives her the cold shoulder. And was like, oh, well, you said you needed space, right? I said, you little bit, oh, You little punk. That's what I'm going to have to use. You stupid punk. Da! 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 Kelly comes along. And so Kelly is just like, hey girl, I got... Well, actually, Kelly was a little pissed. Hold on. Another one of Tiffany's cohorts. I forgot what... I forgot what baby shower group, what they're called. The ladies in that group. But one of them was saying, well, there's not enough room for more than one dessert. I said, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm her friend just like you're her friend. So why are you talking as if you're denying the contribution that I brought to the baby shower? Excuse me, Tiffany, get your friend. How about that? Tiffany, get your friend. I love how Kelly said, why don't you midnight train <laughs> to Georgia these cupcakes before I, I said, no, stop, stop, calm down, calm down. And the other one had the audacity to say, oh, are these backup cupcakes? Back these. Hmm. Stay calm. Stay cool. Stay copacetic. Stay calm. Stay cool. Stay copacetic. Oh, Lord. This enunciation issue. And now everyone's outside. And this is where we get to the main crux of the foolery that's been going on. <sighs> Kelly is p pissed and hurt. Tiffany comes out and has to tell them, hey, yo, what's the problem? Oh, well, why is it that they're doing this and they're doing that and we're being belittled? Tiffany had to let them know, none of you even offered to throw me a baby shower and you're supposed to be my best friends. 
And the messed up part is Blair offered to throw me a baby shower a while ago. I told her no, because I was waiting for one of you to bring it up. And of course, Issa and Molly couldn't say anything. And then Kelly said, you know what? Oh, yeah, I would have thrown you a baby shower. But then Tiffany goes and says, uh, well, well, I'm thinking, and that's what it is. Friends for reasons, friends for seasons. Kelly is your homegirl. That's fun. She's high energy. She, you love, she's a little ratchet and righteous all at the same time. But when it comes down to responsible, accountable, you don't see her that way. And that's hurtful. That's very hurtful. Tiffany. I really feel bad for Kelly because when I rewatch it again, Issa and Molly talked about how they had a lot of stuff going on. And Tiffany was right as far as there's always going to be things going on. But that's also being dismissive as far as kind of saying your stuff superseded theirs. And then Kelly, again, offered to do it. But then Tiffany said, well, Blair's a mom. So I, I said, oh, okay. So th this is how we really feel. Now everyone goes to their respective quarters. They're inside the house. And Molly and, oh Lord, Issa are having this conversation about how Issa's like, I really feel like I'm finally, she's finally over Lawrence. Here comes Dro's wife. Issa had, Issa had that look of, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> And Molly has to go and fake the funk. Molly goes and hits up Andrew, says, you know what, let's go on that date. Why not? Uh, so Issa and uh, Molly probably realize, all right, let us actually go and contribute. They're cleaning up. They're cleaning up the dishes. And Tiffany said, oh, hey, where's Kelly? Well, you just pissed off Kelly. And I guess you're in your own world. So you didn't realize how much it hurt her. So they're trying to make up this excuse of how, yeah, she left because she had to go to work. She's all the, always about making money and you know doing what she needs to do. And they all know it's bull. But that's what happens sometimes when you don't want to, you know, when you don't want to bring up the heavy stuff. You just go and fake the funk. Everyone does it to some capacity. And this is where Tiffany goes and drops the bomb that, oh, it's crazy because Dro and his wife, they're pregnant too. I mean, they she was trying to ruin my parade and it was messed up. But at the end of the day, it's in my baby shower. Oh, you didn't know? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm thinking, oh, Tiffany is really lost. Molly looked like she could have died in that moment. She looked like she could have died in that moment. I said, Molly, you did a good job. I felt so bad for her. Oh. Issa finally got a call back, but it wasn't from Nathan. It was from Lyft. Lyft said that they talked to Nathan Nathan earlier that day and everything has been resolved. So now Issa knows that she's being sidebarred. She's being ghosted by Nathan, by her new boo. But she doesn't know why. And a lot of people are thinking maybe it's because he's a felon. Maybe he was trying to go and just make sure he was cool with Issa. No, the, the Lyft stuff wasn't that serious unless he is a felon. And he couldn't get in trouble. So this is what's confusing me. Unless he's a felon, if he's really just ghosting her, trash. I need a further storyline than that. So come back. Please like, comment, subscribe.